one of the most tedious parts of scanning or digitizing uh, wet plate images is dealing with dust. Uh, this is this is not unique to wet plate. I deal with it with my film images as well. But a friend of mine turned me on to a great solution to speed up the workflow for dealing with dust on my film and, and wet plate images. Uh, I used to do this sort of thing in Adobe Lightroom. And while I love Adobe Lightroom, everything that I do starts and ends in Adobe Lightroom. It is not the best solution for dealing with dust just because of the way the healing tool works in Lightroom. It's not very efficient, it's slow, and actually if you have a lot of dust and, and spots and such to deal with, it will actually start to bog down Lightroom after a period of time. So in this particular case, the, the better solution is to do your dust uh, work in Photoshop. So I've got this image opened up in Photoshop, and you can see, you know, here's, here's um, fit to screen, here's zoomed into 100%, and you can see that there's some dust specks and things like that. Now, I could go in with the, you know, spot healing brush and, you know, try to do all these one at a time, but there's a great tool from a company called Lasersoft Imaging. Uh, it's called uh, SRDX, and it's an AI-based dust and scratch removal tool. Uh, now, I don't use it the way Lasersoft recommends that you use it. Uh, so let me show you my method because I think it's a little more efficient than the method that, uh, that Lasersoft recommends. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my layer into a smart object. Uh, you can do that in a couple of different ways. I have a keyboard shortcut for it, but you can go to the filter menu, since we're going to apply SRDX as a filter anyway, uh, and choose convert for smart filters. And this makes your uh, layer into a special kind of layer uh, that is going to uh, affect the way we work with filters. So once we made it into a smart object, we can go back to the filter menu and once you've got the SRDX filter installed, it's, it's one you have to purchase, but it's, trust me, it's worth it. Uh, you would find it at the bottom of the layer panel, or the layer menu rather, uh, layer soft imaging, SRDX. And when you open this up, it'll, it'll come up with a dialog box and you'll have to kind of fine tune your settings, figure out what works for you. But the um, sliders here for detection intensity and tile size affect how it analyzes the image and picks up what it considers to be dust spots and things like that. Now you can see here that there are some spots, especially the background that I'm, you know, I'm not too concerned about, but there are spots in, for example, Nick's beard here where that's, it's actually probably picking up texture that I want to retain. And this is the reason that I do this on a smart object layer instead of just a regular, um, a regular, um, raster layer. And it's because it makes it easy for me to then adjust where this filter is applied after the fact. So, but this looks about right as far as just general dust removal. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about where it is on his face because I can go back in and undo that very easily uh, after the fact. So we're just going to go ahead and, and uh, click OK here and let the filter do its thing. Now you'll notice because I've applied it to a smart object, I get a layer mask for this uh, SRDX filter. And if I turn that on and off, you'll see uh, what the filter has done. And you do see here in his beard uh, that having that filter enabled hides some of the texture of the beard. In fact, a lot of the texture of the beard. So I don't want that filter to be um, in place in, in that area of the image. Some other details are lost, like the catch light in the far eye. You know, SRDX saw that as, as a defect that needed to be removed. I don't want it to be removed, but it has taken care of a lot of the issues with the background elements, you know, dust and bits and things like that. Um, so here's the beauty of doing this on a smart object layer. Let me turn this filter mask back on. Uh, now, if you know masks in Photoshop, you know that if you, when you work on a mask, uh, you're working with black and white, your foreground and background colors. In mask speak, black conceals, white reveals. So right now, my mask for this dust and scratches filter is white, so it's revealing the effect of that dust and scratches filter on the entire image. But if I want to hide the effect of that dust and scratches filter, uh, I can paint on my mask with a black brush in the areas where I want to hide it. So for example, if you see that it's obscured his, his far eye here, I don't want that. So I'm going to paint with a black brush, B for brush, Make sure my foreground color is set to black, which it is. And I'm working on the mask. And I'm just going to paint over that area with my 
black brush. You can't really see it very well here on the uh, mask thumbnail. In fact, here, let me make it a little larger. There you go. You can kind of see the black spot that I painted there. It's hidden the effect of this filter in that area. Same thing here in his beard. Now I'm zoomed in a little past 100%, but as I paint with black over this area here, you can see I'm, I'm hiding the effect of that filter and thus revealing the original texture and detail of his beard there. Now it's helpful as you work this way to kind of turn that uh, smart filter mask on and off to make sure that you haven't missed anything like there. I can still see there's a lot of work to be done around his mustache, his nose ring. Uh, so let me turn this back on and I'm going to paint in this area here. Make sure I don't lose those important details. Um, so we'll kind of go around here. Sometimes it does a number on edges. So a little highlights and things like that. Uh, textures, patterns uh, in the shirt. So I'm just going to kind of paint over these areas, make sure I haven't lost any important detail here. Yeah, see, we can see little things coming back, like the texture of the buttons, the seams, some of the shirt uh, details. We'll go up to here to Nick's hair and make sure that we haven't obscured any detail there. I'll uh, we'll go over the other eye. Yep, there's little details like that, things that are that are that have been hidden by this filter, and I'm bringing them back here. But the nice thing is that, you know, I can I can do that, I can, and you can see in the mask here the things that I've painted in black. Uh, you'll see, though, that if I turn this on and off, there's a lot of other things in the background that are, um, that are hidden that I, that I don't have to go in and t retouch individually. A lot of dust and scratches and spots and stuff like that. So actually, let me get his beard a little better here. There's some areas there. Just make sure we got all that covered there. So we're not losing any details. A little bit there. Yep. Make sure we get all that. Perfect. Okay. Now, if there are spots that I want to remove that the filter did not pick up, um, <laughs> first of all, make sure they're in the image and not on and not dust on your monitor. If you move your image around and the dust spots don't move, it's on your on your display, not on your image. But let's say, for example, I wanted to remove this uh, little bleb over here on the left hand side. The SRDX filter didn't pick that up. So what I'll do in that case is add a blank layer over top of my image. So click the new layer a button here at the bottom of the layer panel and using my spot healing brush so spot healing brush and making sure that sample all layers is checked we can spot heal non-destructively so by working on a separate layer here and having our sampling set to sample all layers uh, photoshop's going to look at the image data in the layers below my empty layer here and um, sample that that image content but apply it in this empty layer. So if I mess it up or if I change my mind later, it's easy just to use the eraser tool, frankly, which I never use for anything else, uh, on this empty layer to erase and redo my spot healing. So I, I've got my empty layer active. Uh, I've got my sample all layers checked, spot healing tool active, and I'm just going to click. Yeah, and I could go through and do that. There aren't really any other spots that I want to remove, uh, but that would be the way I would do it. Let's maybe see, maybe this one here. And so I let SRDX do the, the heavy lifting and then go in if I need to clean up uh, some spots that it doesn't pick up, I can do that using this non-destructive approach to uh, spot healing on a blank layer. But anyway, the SRDX filter saves me a huge, huge, huge amount of time uh, on retouching, um, spot healing, that sort of thing. Um, took me a lot longer to show you than it does just to do it, but... Um, it's that's that's the way I do this process and it's uh, it's a huge huge time saver hope that helps